Hey everyone, this is David from Finish Line Factory, and I'm here today with Bjorn from Abt America. And uh, today we have the Abt Audi Q7. Uh, this car includes a number of modifications from Abt, including uh, mod carbon fiber trim pieces, uh, a new front bumper, um, and does, does it include any power modifications or anything like that? Not at this point. We're selling power upgrades for the Q7 on other markets, but okay. not yet. Not yet in the U.S. We're working on it. Okay. But no final decision yet. But it has a lot of other stuff that is different to the standard car. Okay, awesome. So we're going to start with a brief overview of the interior and exterior of the car, and then we'll take it uh, for a brief drive around Miami. So let's go check that out. Come on. Um, so here we see the uh, white body kit that we offer for the car, which means the whole front skirt is different, like here, the whole part. We have a lot of carbon fiber parts as well on the front, for example, here around the grill or below as well in our part. Um, we have, if we go to the sides, we have the fender flares here, which give it a more dynamic look. It's wider, looking wider, the whole car. We have our side skirts as well, again with carbon fiber pieces here. Real carbon fiber, which uh, looks really beautiful, I think. We go on then, let's talk about the wheels, because um, this car here is the Abt Vossen 1 of 10. Um, which means we have 10 cars as a limited edition for North America. And uh, this car, yeah, let's say, has it all. So all of our parts actually are sold separately, but not on this special edition. 10 cars for North America. This is num number one of 10. And these wheels were developed together with the guys from Vossen here uh, out of Miami. It's forged wheels, the only forged wheels as far as I know you get for a Q7. 10 by 22 inch. Very nice looking. The design is exclusive, exclusively developed together with the Vossen guys. So up and uh, Vossen. We did a pretty good job. I think we're pretty happy with the results. Also our customers are. Um, going on, the rear skirt is different. So from here downwards is our parts as well. Um, we have an exhaust system installed. We have our end pipes also mentioning the up logo and so on. Um, carbon fiber stuff again here. And yeah, this, this gives the car a lot more dynamic, I would say, compared to the standard Q7. On this car, we also have our air suspension module installed, which means if, if your car is equipped with air suspension, you easily plug and play our level control system, this is how we call it, onto the car. And uh, in dynamic mode, it gets a lot lower and looks a lot cooler. And of course, it feels more dynamic when you go through corners with your Q7 when you activate our system. Awesome, this exterior looks so cool, especially with all the additional uh, carbon fiber bits. It definitely gives the Q7 a more aggressive look. Let's take a look at the interior and see what uh, changes the apt kit comes with. So coming in here, you can see that the plastic trim around the seats has been replaced with this beautiful carbon fiber. And as well as the uh, side view of the dash, the side, the side trim portion of the dash. Uh, so instead of normal boring plastic, it's solid carbon fiber. We have the seats as well, so we modified the seats for our special edition with Alcantara here. Of course, our logo embroidery here. Um, we have in the middle con center console, you can see, we have our uh, carbon fiber shift knob um, that we have. And of course, it's always important if you have a special edition car to show the client what he has. The Abt Vossen 1 of 10, as you can see, because it's 10 cars for North America. Yeah. Oh, a little detail if you want to start your car. It says start, stop and our logo. Hopefully you can see it because there's a lot of reflection. There we go, you can see. Oh, that's excellent. That's just beautiful. Yeah, so some details. <clears throat> In addition, you still get all of the standard features from the uh, Audi Q7. So let me just go ahead and uh, start it up. Close the door, get some AC in here. It's quite warm. So you still have the Audi virtual cockpit, which I just explained on the uh, RS5 from earlier. So you have the, this is the MMI touch system, so uh, you can sc scroll through your menu here. And uh, if you're in, in the navigation system and you wanna open up your, there it is, there you go. Destination input, uh, you can actually just start typing in or actually writing in Oh, I screwed that up. <laughs> you can just start writing in exactly 
where you want to go and it'll provide suggestions and so on and so forth to help you uh, get around quicker instead of having to manually type things in on a small dinky keyboard. Um, you've got the climate control settings here which are uh, simple and easy to figure out. Uh, these have these small LED displays so you can actually just easily just figure out exactly what temperature you want. It then cools down um, the interior rather quickly. Uh, over here you have the drive select so you can choose between uh, off-road, all-road, auto, dynamic and that really changes the character of the car as you're driving, it changes the shift settings and the throttle response uh, much more so than you would on a standard car. Over here you can, actually, you can also turn off the automatic start-stop, traction control. Uh, this is actually a cool setting. You can hit that button and it shows you all of your cameras around the car. So you have a front view, rear view, uh, so you can get, uh, oh, a top-down view where it combines the views from the different cameras. To, it makes it really, really easy to park your car, for example, in parallel a parallel parking situation. I uh, see so the front camera, which is useful if you're uh, coming up on a curbstone. You don't want to uh, run over it. Let's see, it looks, looks like, I'm guessing this is hill descent control. I believe, or Audi Presense, I'm not sure. That could be something else. Uh, in addition, you can also hit this button and hide away the center screen because you can actually do most of those functions right here on the cluster uh, that's part of the Audi virtual cockpit. So, awesome. In addition, you also have the shift knob, the shifter here, uh, which park, reverse, you just push it forward to engage reverse, push it rearward to engage drive, and hit that button to hit for park. And this is where you would adjust your uh, audio controls, volume, skip forward, left, right, back and forth, uh, so on and so forth. So, awesome. You got a small little uh, storage compartment there, but you also have those two USB ports and an aux jack for playing music and stuff. So, awesome. So, I'm going to go, uh, go ahead and get the camera set up and we're going to take it for a brief drive around Miami. Just mentioning before, this car currently has standard horsepower, so it's the... Uh What's the standard? 272, I think, right? Three liter is 272. Oh, I'm, I'm actually not sure. I think it is 272. Yeah, I think 272. And uh, we have power upgrades, but not currently for sale in the US. But we might change that in the future. Just take the car out of park, push a button, and we're in drive. So, can we see? No, it doesn't let me do the drive select from. Do you need the screen on to do drive select? Oh no, it's no, no, you see it there. I as see well. it there. Okay. I would go to individual maybe. What do you have? What do you have there? Some. Uh... No, it's it's not that low as in dynamic. Okay. Might be a bit too low in dynamic because this uh, this level control here is uh, let's say programmed a little bit differently just for show purposes. Right. Okay. Oh, you have ventilated seats as well. That's very yes. nice. We do. Do you need ventilated seats in uh, Miami? I found oh, that out pretty soon, uh, pretty early. Oh, absolutely. I have it on, uh, oh, I see the head-up display as well. Yeah. I found that out um, when I was driving the, because my, my Mustang has ventilated seats, mm -hmm. and when I was driving the RS5, I was looking for the ventilated seats button, and I, just, I couldn't find it, then I found out that um, the RS5 is not, well, it's that, perhaps it's speckable, as you can option it, but that car did not have uh, ventilated seats. Mm -hmm. You got a V6 or V8 or... Uh, it's actually the EcoBoost. It's a oh, turbo four-cylinder. Good. I heard it's a good engine. Mm. Isn't it? Oh, it's a very very good engine. Very quick spool. Um, if you didn't know any better, if you didn't know that it was turbo, you'd, al you'd almost never know. Okay. Alright. And we're on the road. This exhaust currently is still a bit quiet. Um, that's also our exo uh, performance exhaust that we have. Okay. But um, this car hasn't been driven after installation, like maybe only 200 miles, let's say. Mm. So it needs about, let's say, 800 to 1,000 miles until our exhaust opens up a bit and sounds yeah. more throaty. And even if you do upshifts while driving at the full throttle, it really sounds impressive then. So the black Q7 that you have seen as well, yeah. this sounds a lot more aggressive. It's very comfortable. Like I feel like I could go on a 1,000-mile you know, road trip, step out, and it's like a, like one of a 10-mile yeah. road trip. 
Actually, we did a big road trip with uh, the Black Q7, that the other oh, yeah. white body one, from here to uh, New York. Hmm. For business reasons, visiting a lot of uh, dealers hmm. and so on. So it was like, how many miles? Like 3,000 miles or so. Oh, wow. um, so it was pretty relaxing and nice and we really enjoyed it. So it's a good car to cruise around and also a car to yeah, have fun with. Okay. You ever uh, take any cars to the track? Yes, a lot of cars. I was a motor journalist before, oh, uh, so therefore um, I had the chance to drive maybe 450 to 500 different cars in my life. Oh, fun. On the street and also uh, on racetracks. So from small stuff like Mini Coopers up to Aventador 458s, mm. um, four GTs with 790 horsepower. Oh, so, fun. So a lot of crazy, crazy cars, yeah. So th this exhaust system, I know that it hasn't quite opened up yet. It needs a little more time to you know True. burn in, I guess, and break True. in. Uh, yeah. But when you when you get on it, it's got it gives you a nice a nice gentle hum in the back yeah. that reminds you that it's there. But if you're just cruising, it's not loud. It's not droney. It's just yeah. uh, that, that there's there's a little nice growl that yeah. comes with it, and that's. What that the people like all the stuff that we do with our with apt or ABT, however yeah. you want to call it, yeah. um, is more to for the let's say luxury oriented uh, owner, right. which means uh, it 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 can't be too loud, too noisy. Of course, right. we also develop uh, stuff for the R7 or in Europe for the R6. Okay. Stuff from uh, 560 horsepower up to 735 horsepower, even okay. for several clients. Uh, Jon Olsen, I don't know if you ever heard about Jon Olsen. Sounds familiar. He's, he's a ski driver. He has a big YouTube channel with like 1.6 million guys oh, wow. following him. And uh, we built a, an R6 for him. This car is like 800 horsepower and this is a straight pipe R6. Hmm. So this car is like you drive through a tunnel and you get the feeling that the tunnel collapses oh, yeah. after you because the car is so loud. Just so, but let's say 99% of what we do from Apt is really more luxury orientated, which means a bit more quiet, but still different to the standard car. I just found the uh, adaptive cruise control system. Let me see if I can get that to work. There we go. So I believe this could this yeah, will also do um, stop, stop and go or? Normally, yes. Are you already braking? Uh, no, I'm doing it. It's doing it for me. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but you have to trust it, of course. Yeah. You have to get used to the system. So, I would always be prepared. Yeah, but ju just in case something happens. True. As I'm approaching, I, I have my foot like just above the brake pedal in case, because some cars um, they don't they have stop and go, but it's not quite what you expect. Mm -hmm. uh, so you might not expect it to, to stop. Like no. this car here is cutting in, uh, and the car can't pick it up just yet, so I have to manually brake. I think it would have would have braked, but it would have braked later than you as a human would do, which means yeah. it would like pull the brakes harder yeah. than you would because you are prepared to see it in the car exactly. it's like oh it's there and then it breaks a bit yeah. harder yeah uh, some cars like like the Teslas and stuff they have cameras and they're constantly picking up it would have anticipated that uh, I don't know what the Audi may have it, I think it does have a camera watching it but, radar system uh, uh, it's one of those things where it's like uh, I don't know I'd rather, I'd rather just break ahead of time just in case you're absolutely um, right better but that than uh, the car sorry. could see it at the last, at the last minute and then It'll break hard, which is rather uncomfortable. Yeah, that's true. Okay. And we have a lot of stuff in the trunk. <laughs> yeah, I could hear it rattling around a little bit. Yeah. But, but one of the things I've always liked about Audi is just how they, at least at least with, like, within the last few years, just how they tune their transmissions and how they tune their engines when they shift. So... Uh, it's got this little thing that some people, uh, they call it the, the DSG fart, where it goes, whoa, whoa, you know, the, and that's just it, you know, pulling timing so that it can um, match the engine for the next, for the next gear. So that's part of what makes the shift so smooth. And I'm serious, uh, some might sound funny, but um, with the black Q7 we have, uh, yeah. you have this DSG fart with the Q7, yeah. very loud actually, yeah. which is nice. Uh, when you when you have it. it sometimes you're driving just relaxing and it's it's a red light you stop and the, then there's a green light and just for fun you're shifting on your own because you like this yeah. shifting noise even yeah. in the q7 although it's a big and heavy car it's sometimes you enjoy it because it feels and sounds a bit sporty and yeah 
And uh, it's something that, that's really apparent in like the RS models because it has a louder exhaust and the, uh, I believe, I'm not sure, I think maybe the R8 too. But the R8 is double clutch, so it shifts right. much faster, so you might not notice that fart. But because it's an automatic, uh, it's very apparent, and I, I like that. Let me see if I can get it to, there we go. Oh, no, it's a, oh, there we go, now I'm, in, now I'm in manual. So you do have to be moving first. There you go. That's what I think, like, it's, it's got, this is a big car, the Q7 is a big car, but it, with this engine, it's pretty torquey, yep. uh, and it isn't, like, breakneck fast, but it's fast enough to get out of its own way, move, move in and out of traffic as necessary, and, um, it's, it's an adequate amount of power. Yeah, that's true. And uh, the power upgrades we have for this car, um, not yet in the US as I mentioned, but uh, on other markets they they pump the horsepower up from 272 to three, uh, 325. Yeah. And also the torque goes up to what I, I don't know exactly right now, but the torque also of course gets more and this, this helps the car even more to... Right feel more dynamic than it is from yeah. the factory. All right, everyone, that's the Audi Q7 with the abd kit. If you have any questions, I'll be including links to and uh, their contact information in the description below. Um, as In addition, if you have uh, any comments or questions or suggestions, be sure to leave those in the comment section below and be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys later. See ya.